Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Now, I'm away from the bench right now because there's not quite enough room to fix this and film at the same time. But first of all, let's go over some safety things. This is a bed. Don't work on electronics on the bed. This is just for filming purposes because hopefully I can show y'all how to fix one of these heaters instead of throwing it out for about five to ten bucks. But what we have here is flammable stuff. This is controlled. I have a fire extinguisher and if anything goes wrong I can fix it. I am going to put down this piece of uh, I guess it's particle board. It could be MDF but it's old enough to where it's probably particle board. And uh, let's just see what's wrong. We've got it plugged up Let's turn the thermostat up. You can probably hear my other heat, heater going that I actually used to heat this room. It's hardwired. It's much safer. This is a space heater that was brought to me to fix. Well, it's running. That's great. Now, normally, when something happens like it tips over, it stops running. This one's not doing that, and that can cause you to burn down your house, which I'm sure nobody wants. can also melt other things, but you can see this is our switch right here. When I'm holding it like this, it should not be running, but it is clearly running while I let the microphone here. That is a problem. We need it to cut off when this is not being pressed in. Let's unplug it before it gets too hot because this is a little warm already. Alright, so let me kind of reconfigure here and we will cut to that. Okay, so here we are. Still on the bed but made us a bench. And let me zoom out a little bit here. I have us a few tools. Um, you don't actually need this. This is just a magnetizer, demagnetizer. I have a little pick here. It's a little straight pick. Sorry about the shaking. Most of you regulars know that I have essential trimmers. For any of you new people, that's why you'll see me shaking a lot. I have a tiny flathead screwdriver here, and we might need these just to get the clips off. I have a short stubby Phillips head, a pair of pliers, needle nose, and we have just a magnetized Phillips screwdriver here. So now I'm going to get to working on this case here. Now I'm probably going to speed this up so as not to bore you. Alright, so got all my screws out. I'm going to lay this to the side. Just let it dangle. And let's bring you in closer here. This right here is what we're going to take out. I'm going to take this all the way out just to kind of show you what we're dealing with. I'm going to try my best not to get in the way of the camera. Now I'm going to magnetize this to this magnetizer isn't that strong we have these clips and they can be kind of a pain to get off but you can stick one of the picks in there to get them out or sometimes you can use a screwdriver a little flat head to get in there and come to kind of just to pop these up a little bit. Don't pop them too much though because we want to bend them back. 
just these contacts here because they're going to go back onto our new part. So right here we have two and you would just lift up on them a little bit. These I've already done so that it wouldn't take me forever. We just want to pull these off. Really, all you'd have to do is take this piece off here. There we go. Kind of keep my hands out of the way. Get my tip it up a little bit. We're going to get it out too. And our part has come. These are microwave door switches that they use in these. So we have what says calm there that's for common that's our top wire and then right here is no for normally open and below that is nc for normally closed so when we get our switch we want to make sure that it has a prong coming out from normally open this is what we have here we have a spring and a plunger and we have this tip that goes over it and what it's doing is bumping this so this should be clicking and popping and everything but it's lost its springiness it should be clicking and popping and making all kinds of racket because when this is pushed in it should allow a circuit to complete between here and here and here and this one's just not doing that. It's permanently stuck open. Now I just happen to have some microwave switches. And these are pretty cheap. They only cost between 5 and $10. Sometimes you can get a bunch of them for $10 or $8 on Amazon. I got three different ones here. And just, just so you know, this is the sound we should be getting. I'll put it over there at the microphone where you can hear it and here's the other one. Nothing. So we have a couple of different kinds here. This one right here has a normally open, a normally closed, and a common two except it has leads, contacts coming from all of them. This one is normally closed only of course with your common. So they all look fairly similar and you really need to know which one is the right one for you. So luckily for me I've got a few hanging around and we already know that we need the normally closed which is this clicky boy right here. So we'll get rid of these and you can see the similarity. Okay, let's put this clicky boy on there. What we really need to do is make sure that our plunger here can hit this. So I'm going to go ahead and put the plunger back in there. So the main thing is we want to make sure we get our clicker, our actuator, down in there. Where the plunger is and quit running my butt into the mic that's where having a magnet helps <laughs> let's go ahead and get it screwed in and then I'm going to use my finger to check for clickiness Now we are getting hung up. I think what we've got is a little warpage. Make me a mark. Right in the center there. And see if we can't start a screw there. What I'm going to do is where I've made my little point, I'm just going to drill into that here with the drill it'll be hard for me to show you 
So these should be drop-in replacements, but unfortunately this has become a little warped. So now I have a hole there. Okay, yeah, we're not hanging up at all now. Let's just finish screwing that in there. That's good. Perfect. Okay, so now that we've got it in there nice and tight, we want to make sure that we squeeze these back down just a little bit. We don't want to overwork them. See, that one ain't gripping good, so I'm going to give it a good squeeze here. Try and get that in camera here. Now that ain't going to come off there. We've already got this back together before I change the camera. It's all popping in and out good. So now let's just put this back together and make sure everything's going to stay where it's supposed to stay. And this is actually a little bent, so I want to take some special care when I put the remaining screws in it. Somebody's had this apart before. So now we're back here. We're going to test it out. Say so begin by my trusty calipers. Plug it up. And by the way, guys, never ever use awful green ungrounded extension cords. This ain't grounded anyway. Honestly, a heater I think should always be grounded. But these are awful. Um, they're not really rated to take the load that your house wiring can. You guys over in uh, the UK and other places, y'all have got fuses in these cords. For some stupid reason, we don't. But let's get to the testing here. We've got it plugged up. We've got heat. What happens when we turn it over? It turns off. Awesome. Turn it back up, still going good. Turns off, now I'll give you a close up here. Let's let the fan die down. So I'm not holding the uh, switch in right now, but when I press it, you'll see the fan starts going. And it's that little switch there that keeps houses from burning down. And it's an easy fix. Anybody can do it. Anyway, now that we've got everything fixed, everything's working, I appreciate y'all watching. And if you enjoyed this content, I hope I earned a like and subscribe. Um, if you did like it, please do that for me. It helps the channel out a lot. It helps me out a lot. And I'm very grateful. Um, but I'm also grateful for everyone watching. So, we'll see you again on the next time. Oh, and don't forget to check it out. I've got a new channel, Carolina Mountain Mysteries. I'll put a link in the description for it. It's all scripted. I don't really do scripted videos over here, which is why you hear me go, mm, uh, and you see me uh, rambling on and such and having to move tools around. And it. This is not a scripted channel. I started this channel uh, just for fun. The other channel's a lot more professional. I write the scripts out way ahead of time and get some footage and interlace it all in. Anyway, it's going to look a lot more professional than this. So it's a lot different and I would appreciate it if you would check it out. Um, yeah, it's going to be a whole lot better. I'm really excited about the new channel. It's a um, 
mystery from my area, a missing persons mystery. So we'll see how that turns out. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. After shooting the video, wasn't really happy with how the switch was uh, reacting. It was getting hung up sometimes, not much, but one hang up is too many. So what I ended up doing is drilling a pilot hole and putting a screw in to hold it all the way down flush. The pilot hole that I drilled earlier, I put the screw through it and uh, took it out and then when I put it back in again it just broke so I super glued it back together and just didn't use that screw anymore. But I did put a smaller screw in and now it's held all the way down flush with it uh, as shown here in the pictures and it works just perfect now it's it's set so low now that it can't hang up and um, everything works good I did take the switch apart the spring was just done for inside of it and uh, that was the only problem so uh, I'll just add this in and I appreciate you watching don't forget to share rate and subscribe uh, and I hope to see you next time. Have a good one.